Keith, I understand you had distribution for Mason Brothers during production, is that right? Right, um, so we had a uh, pre-sales deal with my distributor um, prior to, so I wrote the script um, in, let's see, it was November of 2015. And then uh, shortly afterwards, I had a pre-sales deal with my distributor. So I had, before we started filming, I had distribution already locked in. So I was very fortunate with that. And so please tell us, because we have so many filmmakers trying to figure out how to get distribution. I mean, how did you even get the conversation started with distributors? Was this the first one you talked to? Um, you know, people have asked me that before. I think, so I met my distributor, I met uh, from I remember, because I go to American Film Market every year, which most people should go if you're in the industry. Um, and you're always meeting, when you're there, it's like a big madhouse of distributors and you know, financial, everyone's just, so it's like multiple floors in Santa Monica at the Lowe's, I think it's the Lowe's Hotel. Um, but I just met so many different distributors through there and I stayed in contact or email. And I think I was in touch with my distributor after that from I remember, if I'm not wrong. Um, so I just kinda, we, I think they reached out to me or I reached out to them shortly after, like months later, and then we started talking. And then I told them that, uh, you know, I had this feature film that I was shooting in the summer of 2016. And then uh, we talked about a deal and then we ended up negotiating and locked in a deal. So it was pretty exciting to have that going into the into, or into principal photography shooting uh, production. It was good to have that on the table. So you you came to L.A. in 2012? 2012, yes. 12, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so then was this your first AFM? Was in like, what, 2015 or 2016? Uh, around there, 2015 maybe, 2014. Okay. 15 or 14 around there. I've been there a couple years now, like two or three years I've been there. Oh, okay. So going. was this your second time when you when I you believe actually... so. Yes, oh, yes. Cool. yes. Yeah. Okay, so maybe you felt more at ease. And then when you when you went, I mean, like, what, what was your mindset to just start talking to people and find out who's a distributor and then right. just tell them about, you know? Right. Um, just networking. I mean, a lot of this industry, like, like I've told people before, I mean, 99% of it's relationships and networking, meeting people and, uh, you know, people who want to work with you and you want to work with them. So my goal was just going there and um, meeting as many people I can and distributors and who I would work well with. So I uh, ended up exchanging a lot of cards with people and telling about the projects I had with my production company. And then, um, then yeah, I just stayed in touch through emails, just constantly emailing people and it's just a constant hustle. So. So I'm curious because, I mean, sometimes big events like that are kind of terrifying. Are you going in, is it like almost like a bar, like a party situation, and mm -hmm. then you're striking up conversations with people? How does that work? <laughs> um, kind of. Not, not really, but kind of. It's um, So they have, when you go to American Film Market, they have, like I said, different levels, different stories of, um, it's like, I think like seven or eight stories high. Like the hotel, it's a hotel. I mean, every... There's every room at this hotel is a, a suite. Obviously, they have different rooms, and um, every distributors there's distributors in every single room. Sometimes even two, um, but usually a distributor will have their own room, um, or a production company, or um, some other type of company, investors, people like that. So you really just go around to the different uh, rooms, and you, those like there's like a sign-in sheet you can sign in, or you can call or email their company um, weeks in advance and make an appointment. And then you can make an appointment for either the project you have in development with you know acquisitions or um, or a project that's already done which you're trying to sell. Mm -hmm. You know you just basically tell them what what you want, and they usually they'll book you for for an appointment if they're interested. And then afterwards, usually they close down at like 6 p.m. and then you have uh, everyone goes down to like the bar afterwards, and that's really where a lot of <laughs> negotiations begin yeah. over a drink. So it's it's a good great event. I think everybody in the industry should go if you're producer especially if you're a director writer actor anything you should go it's a must you have to pay an admission fee right you do have to yeah. pay okay sounds like it's definitely worth it but it's worth it yeah so when you went that one time how many cards would you say you got from distributors oh gosh um uh, i would say maybe close to 100 maybe less well maybe i'm exaggerating maybe like 50 or so that's a lot but i had like a huge bag full of just like dozens and dozens of cards you're like going through trying to memorize who you talk to and stuff so but a lot yes yeah, definitely a lot interesting okay so then you get home and are you emailing them how, how is this the, what, what happens once you have this bag of cards right. um well both um so you're, you're you're following up with the people that you talk to um 
based on whatever your conversation was on if, if they like the project or if you're trying to sell something or get you know, you have a project in development, you're looking for financing. Um, however, there are, there's, there's some guys who would like, for instance, email me. If they say, hey, you talked about that film, um, you know, we're interested in that. Let us know. You said you were shooting it in whatever the summertime. Um, you know, we'd be interested in, in distributing it if you want to talk about that. So it's a little bit of both. But mostly you, it's kind of in your hands. You know, it's your own. You have to reach out to them a lot because they have so many people that they're talking to. Unless they really love your project or whatever you're trying to, you know, pitch or, you, or you're shooting soon that they, uh, they want to take on. Interesting. Um, and so then how many of them said, can we see the script? Like at what point or did some get back to you, some not get back to you, and then some said, can we see the script? I mean, some did. Um, some did. A lot more more interested in, hey, you know, when's the, when's the shoot schedule? When will you be done? And, you know, what's the story? Who's attached, really? They really want to know who's attached. Oh. That's the first question I ask is who's attached, what actors, what director, uh, what producers, because as you know, a lot of people, um, you know, industry, it's, you sell a movie usually based on the actors and the talent are attached, or sometimes the director, if it's a big name director, but usually the name talent. So that's the first question I ask is who's attached, what actors. So I ask that, and, you know, what's the story about? Uh, when are you shooting it? When will it be done? Things like that. I and mean, they will ask for the script, you know, afterwards, but, so. Oh, wow, that's great. And so, yeah. so you're following up or they're contacting you and then you actually shoot the film and then when you go to follow up with those various people, how many actually follow through? With, well, what do you mean when the film's done? Yeah, so when you, you shot, um, if, if I'm understanding this correctly, so you then you shot the film and then you're like, hey guys, um, you know, to these different distributors, right. um, I'm done, you guys want to take a look at it or? Right, well you can't, yes you can do that obviously, and I mean to answer your question, like a lot of from my other friends within the industry, with are directors and other producers and uh, people in that nature, um, if you have a finished product, and if it if if the picture looks good, they're gonna want to see a trailer, obviously, and a key art, a poster. And if they like that, I mean, most distributors, if it looks good, sounds good, they're gonna be interested. Somebody will be interested, even if there's not a key actor, somebody attached. However, um, with with my film, um, since I already had that pre-sales deal with my distributor prior to shooting, I didn't do that because I already had that locked in. So like when the film was, I already had a contract with them before shooting. So basically, once the film is done, you know, the film goes to them, they take it for a certain percentage for every sale. So that's kind of how that worked with me. So I wasn't doing like all these emails with that, the feature I just did. Ah, okay. So. Sorry. Yeah, I was trying to understand that. That's fascinating. So y this is your first feature and you're already locking in a distribution deal before it's shot? Right. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. amazing. It is. Yeah, it's, um, I was fortunate. Uh, it's, it's very hard to get distribution. It's very, very hard. It's hard to get distribution and, and financing for a film in general. So like making, uh, making a film and pushing it through to its final ending and getting out to a distributor and marketing it and stuff is extremely hard. And I'm very fortunate to get to that. I mean, it's, it was tough. So, but, um, but yeah, that's what happened. Let me see if I understand this, Keith. So you said that your distributor wanted you to have name talent attached. How did you prove to them that you had different people attached and who were these people? What were their credits? Right. So, I mean, um, I, had a, I had a great uh, cast. I had a lot of good cast members attached. We were in like a lot of day roles and TV shows and stuff. And one of uh, June Cesario was in like, Sunset Beach back in the 90s and he was in some good stuff. And um, I had him and then what really sold my distributor on taking on the film from I remember was my uh, my cinematographer, uh, Earl Weber. Um, he is, in 2010, he won a, well, he was part of a short film in 2010, what's called American Promise, I believe it was called, what won an Academy Award and Oscar in 2010. And he was the cinematographer on the film, a director of photography. Um, and it, like his, his reel was awesome. I mean, his reel was awesome, his resume was, uh, resume was awesome. And just all that together, I think, is what sold them onto getting the pre-sales deal done. But I think a lot of it had to do with Earl um, being part of the Oscar-winning movie in 2010, a short film, what really sold onto them coming on board. And then, like I said, I had good cast members what were in day roles and TV shows and stuff. And then my music composers, in my opinion, the best in the business, or one of the best, uh, Federico Veona. And um, he was attached, and he's awesome, too. So... 
Now, I know you've done shorts before on your own. Did they ask to see those as well so that they could see your other work on, in yes. a shorter form? Oh. Yes, absolutely. Yes, I mean, they saw my, my resume. I gave them my resume and the IMDb and stuff. And then uh, they, asked, they asked for my shorts, yes. So I got to see my style from directing and as a writer as well. So I think all that, all those things in totality as a total package is what helped get the deal. But I know Oral Weber was a big influence as well since he was part of that movie in 2010. I mean, winning an Oscar is huge, or being part of a film won an Oscar. So going back to American film market, if you were to go again today or go again for the first time, is there anything you would do differently? Um. Yes, I mean I would come more with a more the packaged uh, film. I mean, even when I was going with like the Mason Brothers to American Film Market, and I had other projects too. It wasn't just that one. Um, I was a little more green in the business. I mean, I didn't know as much, but I would come with more of a complete package, more people attached. I didn't have all these different cast members attached, even at American Film Market. I had some, but as time went on, and then when I finally spoke to my distributor, I had more people attached. But I would come more with a prepared package, especially with um, just more more names and more people, just to show them this is what it is. Um, so that, and then, um, yeah, and then obviously ready to show any type of proof of financing that they can see. I mean, I don't have to have it right there at the market, but you know, it's ready to, if they want to see, Hey, where's the proof of financing that you have to shoot this so we can do a deal, you know, within the next week or two.